One last bit of language for you before we start looking at some operations, okay? Remember, the most important thing in our polynomial is the degree, right? So therefore, the term with the degree kind of matters, and therefore, the coefficient of that term also kind of matters, right? Now, when that leading coefficient, when it's equal to 1, okay, we give the whole polynomial uh, another sort of name because it's a really... It's a, it's a case, again, that comes up so frequently, it's worth giving its own name. Uh, it's a name you actually already know from quadratics. In fact, here's a quadratic. There's the degree. This is the leading term. So what's the le leading coefficient for that one? It's 1, right? So we call this, it starts with M. It's a word that means m 1. And we call it a monic quadratic, right? But all of these polynomials, if they have a leading coefficient of 1, we call the polynomial monic. A monic polynomial, which you know comes from like mono from monorail and so on. Okay, um, so monic polynomials come up again and again and again, which is why when you see something frequently, you give it a special name. Okay, <coughs> so now let's have a look at this. Um, <coughs> I'm going to skip straight down to question two. Because it's really where the, um, the business end starts to get happening and, and the rest of it's really not, not as interesting. Okay? So I wonder if you can squint and you can see. What they're doing is they're borrowing the function notation that they've, we've already talked about. Okay? We usually call our functions f for function. These are all polynomials. So instead of f for function, they will very frequently use p for polynomial. Okay? So we've got a pair of polynomials here. Here's one of them. And then because um, they want to they talk about how two polynomials interact together, the next letter after P is Q, even though it doesn't stand for polynomial. Okay? So you've got P for polynomial, and then your second one, which is this. Okay? Just quickly, before we do any operations on them, can we identify these pieces over here? I'm talking about, say, Q, for instance. Okay? What's the degree when you look at it? Read it off. It's just squared, right? So it's 2. Okay? That makes this the leading term over here. So what's the leading coefficient? One. It's 1. And what's the constant term? Two. 2. No problem. I'm not going to use any of that particularly for this set of questions, but you need to start to recognize. Okay, I can read those features off. Okay, now we're going to do some operations, right? So we're going to be able to add these two together. We can manipulate them in a variety of ways. Adding, subtracting, and multiplying are really easy. We'll get to the next operation, which is missing. We'll get to that on Thursday. It's substantially harder, but this is going to form our building block. So, example. I think this is the first one they asked for. Okay. And I'm going to read this as p of x, p of x. That's my function, like, phrasing coming in. p of x plus q of x. And all I need to do is add these two together. That's all I'm doing. Okay. Now, noticing that all these families of polynomials, can you see they're very frequently have x squared terms in them. And they'll very frequently have x cubed terms in them. So what I want to do is I just want to match up the right terms. I'm sort of collecting like terms, but on a bigger scale. So when I look at both of these together, both of them together, how many x squared terms are there in the whole lot? One. There's just the one. There's just that x squared there. So I'm just going to write it down. x squared. OK? How many x terms are there? There's two. There's one in the top polynomial, and there's one in the bottom one. Um, I've talked before about how useful colours are. If you have some extra colours, um, use them because like, they will seriously save you, you know, missing terms or matching up the wrong ones. And if you don't have colours, go and buy some, okay, because they're really useful. There's that X term there and there in P and in Q, okay? So I'm going to match them up and I say, well, I'm adding things, right? So 4X plus 7X, that's how many X? 11. Done. And lastly, I've got a constant term. I've got a constant term in each one, right? Again, I'm going to pair them up. One, two. When I add them, what do I get? Negative one. No problems. Okay, that's really easy. Now, when we do a subtraction, one of the great things here is because you have, uh, if you're following along with me, because you have paired up all of these things already with colors, that makes the next process even easier, right? Don't forget, order matters when you subtract. Okay. So I've already got that, so that sole x term, x squared term, hanging out there. Okay. But notice I'm doing p take away q. 
take away q, right? So I have no x squared terms here, and I'm taking away an x squared term from here, right? So I write down minus x squared. Do you see that? You see why it's negative? It's because I'm subtracting q. Wait, what's q? So q is this whole polynomial here, right? So I'm going line one, take away line two. Line one, take away line two. So in some ways, there's a zero missing there. And in fact, later on, especially when we look at Thursday's lesson, you will find some people will write it like this. They'll say, even though there's no x squared term there, they'll put one there so that they don't forget. There's something there, but there's just none of it. Okay? Zero, take away one, negative one. So that's why I have negative x squared, minus x squared. Four x, take away seven x. Minus three x. And lastly, Negative 3, take away 2, negative that's, now, minus 3 minus 2, it gets even more negative, right? When you add two negative to the other, so it's, it's minus 5, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, be careful. Now, I'm not going to do C, which is just in reverse order. That's Q take away P, but suffice to say, you're going to get a different answer, aren't you? Right, for starters, instead of 0 take away X squared, you'll get X squared take away 0, okay? Actually, you know what, really quickly, we don't even need to do the work here. Because do you agree that if I have a pair of numbers like this, right? 5 take away 3, you know what the answer is. But that's the same as doing this, isn't it? Like putting a minus sign here changes the order. Yeah, like if you're not convinced, just let me, I'll expand it. And that's 5 take away 3. Are you happy? Okay. So if I know what P take away Q is, then what will Q take away P be equal to in relation to this? Isn't it just this with a minus sign slapped out the front? Do you see that? Like that changes the order. So this is negative P take away Q. Do you see that? Do you see that these two are equivalent in the same way that these two are equivalent? So I don't even need to do the subtraction. I've kind of already done it here. I just turn everything around and I'm done. Okay, do you see how we're taking advantage of what you know about algebra in this newer kind of sphere?